Hi, today we're going to look at R3 of the Topaz filters that I find very useful. In particular, we're going to look at how we can use Topaz lens effects to mask out an image and then re import the mask that we create within lens effects and use that to alter um, things like even saturation in the unmasked areas. So, the first thing I need to do is just open a recent image, which is this one, I believe. Now this is a, a lady I saw at the little railway station, so fascinating with a hat and everything, a nice Canadian lady it was very kind and let me take a photograph. So I'm just going to leave all of the settings in camera raw as they are, I'm not going to alter anything for this demonstration. Now uh, I'm not going to use keyboard shortcuts, because I, I know some people don't like to use them, so we're going to fit on screen. Okay, now the first thing I would always do is create a new layer. So I'm going to duplicate layer. Now I'm not going to rename it, I'll just leave it at background copy. The first filter I always use in Topaz is the detail. So I'll click on detail, let it load up. Now I tend in a portrait not to use too much detail filtering. Topaz is very, very good. The presets, I find, work for me. And I very rarely actually have to go and adjust anything. So I'll just click on Reset. Now, for me, I go straight to the Creative Detail session. And for a portrait, I'd probably start in General Detail Light 2. So I'll click on that. And it just gives enough of a boost. If you look around the eyes and the specs and mouth, it's just sufficient. OK, click OK to return it to Photoshop. Now, again, I'm going to duplicate the layer. Just leave it at background copy again. Now, the next filter I would use from Topaz is Clarity. Clarity's got some really good portrait filters. And just let it load up. It's just probably using the last setting, which is probably the one I'm going to use anyway, but I'll reset. Now, we can see the portrait once here. My favourite is usually three or four, depending on the original image. In this case, three looks about right. Four is a bit too much, I think. So we'll click on three. Yeah, that's lovely. Just go back to the original. Yeah, I think three gives us just the amount of boost that we need. So click on OK for that. Let it return to Photoshop. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. Again, I'm going to duplicate the layer. There we go. Now, this is where things get interesting. I'm going to try and do this next bit using my mouse. I'm not going to use my tablet, because I know some of you folks out there won't have a tablet. So I've done that. So filter, Topaz Labs, and lens effects. Now, lens effects is amazing. It just takes a little bit of work and getting your head around. Now, for this one, I'm going to use the 35mm uh, the SLR lens. Um, I'm going to probably try the 135 f2 or maybe the 105 f2. So we'll go for the 135 f2. See what 105? No, definitely the 135 f2 for this one. OK, so the first thing that we notice is we've got these menu options here. As soon as I click on Adjust Depth Mask, the filter will start working and calculate what it thinks is the correct depth mask for depth of field for this image. Click it. Off it goes. There we are. That's what it thinks. Now, the black areas are those that are closest to us and the white areas are those that are farthest away from us. Now you can see straight away that this wouldn't be any good at all because we're going to have an out of face, out of um, focus face and an in focus jacket and, and shirt. So if we go to the depth value near to far, so the first thing I'm going to do is click on zero. That'll give us the nearest focus because we're going to start working on the face. Now for this image this is the brush size. You can see the size here on the white there. Can you see by the teeth? That's 64 probably a bit small. Try 128 that's better. 
Now we can either do it on this side or this side. Now, as I say, I'm trying to do this with my mouse, so please bear with me. So what I would do initially is just roughly try and trace around the area that I want to be in focus with the black. Just takes a little bit of work and it does take a bit of fine tuning but believe me it's worth it in the end. Now this has got quite a complicated background in that it's got posters and people and, and what have you. Now just see what happens with that. Let it do its calculation. Yeah, it's not too bad I suppose. So we've got the, the white here. We need to just go across that and there. Now I'm just going to turn, take the brush size down to 64 uh, and if we just go make some scribblies on the face let it do its thing. We're getting there. Now you can see we're going to have to make some adjustments. But basically what we're left with, if we look, is we've got a rough outline with some things that need adjusting. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, all I want to do is create a black and white mask. Because I want to use the mask that we create and save to do some further editing within Photoshop. We're going to use this to send the background out of focus in the first instance and then desaturate the background in Photoshop. So the next thing I want to do is go to 255 which is the white brush which anything that we brush over in the white will be out of focus. So it's just carefully going into the areas that we've currently got black Believe me, with a tablet this is so easy. So easy with a tablet, but uh, say not everyone's got access to a tablet, so I just really want to show that it is possible to do this with your mouse if you're careful. Okay. Right, we've overspilt there. You can see the jacket, so we're going to have to bring that back in a second. This is what I say. It does take a little bit of fiddling around with, but it's not too, too much. Okay, that bit there. And we've got some of the brickwork up here. Now, for some images, or quite a lot, it doesn't really matter that we haven't got it accurate, but because we want to create a mask, I think it's quite important that we try and get it fairly accurate. You can actually tidy the mask up within Photoshop if you want to, but I think we can get a, a reasonable result without having to do that. Okay, just by the specs there, there's a little bit that needs grabbing there. Okay, now that's all black merged in with the hat, so this is where I would move across to the coloured image itself rather than to w working on the black mask. Okay, now we'll go back to the black mask and just get rid of the tiny little bits there. There. Basically it's just putting the cursor onto a spot and just clicking and letting the the filter do its work. I think it's quite clever. But obviously it's a delicate process to do. Now what we've got to do is recover this part of the jacket. So if we go back and click on zero again and see if we can just that's oh, okay. Gently by clicking a little bit at a time recover our jacket down to the bottom like that okay and I'm going to go back to 255 and just see if we can get rid of that little bit there and there and there now okay it's not perfect you can see you could spend quite a while tidying this up. I don't see there's a bit there that probably does need tidying a little bit more. Uh, that's better. And there. 
you could spend forever doing that uh, until you get the perfect mask so what we do now is go to menu save mask now as you can see i've got some canadian ladies there already because i've been editing this photograph so what i'm going to do is call this canadian lady demo now this is going to save it as a tiff file i'm saving it onto my desktop so just save that okay now what we do to actually see what the effects like within uh this topaz lens effects uh, plugin is click on the next tab down which is focal plane adjustment and here we've got the sliders for background blur mount and foreground blur mount so i'm going to just zero these across like that okay now i would tend just to use the background blur amount on this image let's move it to about 50 percent and see what we've got you can see the before and after i'm going to go a little bit more than that uh probably more than that that's getting there in fact i'm going to go all the way across on this image and we can see the comparison between the two uh it's a nice effect you can obviously change the the photo plane or the photo plane position and you can change the lens characteristics here for this demonstration i'm not going to because the actual aim is to show how we can load a, a created mask into photoshop so i'm happy with that there's a, an extra bit of blur there I'm going to click OK to send this back to Photoshop and see what we have there. Should just take a second. It's got a lot of work to do to calculate it. And there we are. I'm really pleased with that. Now, the first thing I'm going to do now is open the mask that we've just created i'm not going to open it into a new layer i'm just going to open it as a new document so open oh look, there's my railway station pictures so it was called i think canadian lady demo let's have a look it's got me somewhere on here canadian lady demo and there it is a tip file so just open that now as you can see within photoshop if you want you could tidy that mask up it's a simple black and white mask that we need but we're not going to so i'm going to select all edit copy now what i'm going to do first is to change the saturation of the background so if we click on the use saturation there okay it creates a a mask a layer mask thumbnail now if you press the alt on pc and click in that you can actually look inside that mask and this is where we paste the tiff file we've just created so edit paste there we are that's the mask pasted in to the mask layer and just click on it now when we alter the saturation hopefully only the background the white part of the mask should desaturate and there we go we can take it all the way down take it all the way up all the way down all the way up i know we can get sick of doing this so let's do something that we can actually actually see so there we are and that's the the saturated back now you can obviously do all sorts of things now that you've created this mask um let me have a look and see what else we could do um i'll just merge these together okay so that's a merged a new layer with everything merged in with the new desaturated background to so see well on and off you can see the difference between the desaturated background so if we um duplicate the layer okay so we've got a new arm um, there now we can there uh, put a new mask in layer mask alt click edit paste or control v if you're using shortcuts now 
whatever we do now whatever filter you want to apply will only apply to the white area so we go to topaz labs and let's go to let me have a look what could we do let's go to restyle restyle keeps me happy for hours and hours because there's just so much you can do with restyle it's absolutely amazing so let's have a look just pick one I'm hoping that this should just apply to the let's do something that's really obvious should we that's a look. there try that that's okay now if I click OK let it calculate and there we are it's just affected the background so apply the layer mask we'll just merge it and that's what we've got now as you can see the topaz filters are very very versatile lens effects is absolutely amazing but it does take a little bit of work to get used to it with a mouse it's a little bit tricky but practice and you'll be fine with a a tablet it's very much easier to use and i think really it's a great way to create masks ad hoc masks um, very accurately uh, where your subjects have got different levels of depth of field to them and you can't you can use it for other things other than just port rates you can actually use it to create selective masks or landscapes or industrial photographs or whatever you want you don't have to be simply limited to what the filter is designed to do try the filter out i think it's excellent and it's worth that little bit of extra effort it's probably the most complicated of the topaz filters to use but it's worth that extra effort i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and uh, maybe i'll do another one in the future thanks very much